Now we have here Päivi Karesjoki. Welcome. What a pleasure to have you here joining the virtual summit. Päivi was the CEO and shareholder for Avaria, a business intelligence company, and they succeeded. They made a strategy and they succeeded to make an exit. Päivi, welcome and tell, tell us a little bit about your backstory. Thank you, Margus. Great to be here. I'm happy to share my my experience with strategy and um, uh, and all the, the process we gone through with you. Uh, my background is that I have been in uh, ID business more than uh, 25 years, quite a long time. Okay. Uh, I thought you were 25 years old. <laughs> thank you. Uh, so I have been working with the very big global companies like ABB, then going back to the very small startup company, uh, back again, uh, a big US, US company, and being and seeing the, the whole uh, evolvement of, of IT in different business areas. And, and what size was Avarea? <laughs> Uh, Avarea, uh, when I joined Avarea, was a four years old company. It was about 20 people. It had been growing very fast. And uh, my task was there to uh, find a new, new uh, vision and uh, agree with shareholders what is the next steps to be taken. And uh, of course, uh, if there's exit in, in, the, in, in the future, in pipeline. And when I joined the company, the company was very successful. It was, was doing very profitable business, but it was a typical uh, fast-growing startup without any big vision, without any strategy, without any organization. Uh, so the bunch of people doing great work. And my task was then to start doing that more in, in, in a structured way. Yes, business. and I remember that that time wasn't so easy for you, wasn't it? No, it was not easy because I, I remember that we had we talked to other Ramet and, and you were sometimes quite frustrated. Yeah. yeah. What was the problem then? <laughs> Uh, the problem was, also, of course, that we uh, we uh, had in the company uh, eight nine shareholders, and and they could not agree for the common goal and, and vision. Uh, and me in 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 between, they're trying to listen from west wing and left wing, and and find the way in the middle and how how the how to take the, the company to the next level. So that was the first challenge. Uh, the second challenge was also as as well that. Uh, at the same time, we had a, this business idea of, of establishing a product business that required an investment. And uh, Avarea was uh, a service company. Uh, we did a consultancy work where our <clears throat> turnover came uh, with, with people invoicing their hours. And then at the same time, the part of the shareholders had a vision to start product business. Okay. Uh, and that was another very interesting area. Oh yeah, and uh, I don't know how much you want to tell, but 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 let me still ask you. <laughs> you can say that if you don't want to tell the story. But I remember that that when we met quite often, then or let's say twice a year or something like that, once a year. Then I remember that you came to the point when you said that now it's enough that I uh, either you you shareholders start to listen to me or then I leave. Wasn't it like that? Yeah, yeah, that was the one one very crucial point where I was sitting in the meeting room asking from the shareholders that, okay, if you want to uh, uh, start a product business and keep the service business, uh, that requires investments. And please tell me how much of um, within the next five years you would like to receive uh, what the size of the product business, how, how big of our total turnover it should be. The, the response is varied from 20% to 100%. And then I was there in the middle, like, uh, okay, interesting. <laughs> to find. It was a very, very crucial point. And, and at that point, I say that now, now we have to find that the common way, uh, share the same vision and ambition, and based on that, make the strategy. And, uh, yeah, and then wasn't it so that then some shareholders left and you became a shareholder also? Yeah, yeah. that yeah. time I was not a part of the shareholders uh, and shareholding and um, uh, then two, two shareholders left then uh, at that point where we needed to have the common understanding. They could not agree <laughs> with the rest of the, the shareholders and then two months after the third one left. So 
uh, three shareholders left. Yeah, I, I admired you then very much that you were able to withstand. I mean, also I understood that all the shareholders were big hairy guys and, and you as a lady there and then you put your fist on the table and said, now stop it. <laughs> so I think that was a very, very, it was a tough, tough thing, baby. I congratulate for you doing and then you were a shareholder and you also uh, succeeded in exiting the company. But now let's go back to the time when you realized that now I need to make a, a strategy one page. Or was it so, baby, that you had the first version and then you did one version more, one round more, a few, mm -hmm. uh, few years later? Yeah. The first thing when I started uh, in the company, so we did the first search page, uh, one page where you actually was uh, like uh, consulting me with that one, but it was not a really big project at that time. It was like we could reach something that uh, I could start working with uh, with uh, shareholders and, uh, and organization. But then uh, after this product business started to boost uh, and become a real business, then we decided to have a second round and make it in 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 deep and proper way uh, involving uh, all the all the organization and uh, all the, the management team members and uh, so forth yeah how many were uh, were you at that point uh, we were a little bit more than 40 people so we were uh, we double the, the the size of the employees yeah. Yeah, um, that's really a hot market the, the business intelligent market everybody Mm. I remember you saying that it's such a fight for talent and, and the guys who are business and, uh, intelligence people, their salaries, you know, went up like crazy. They were so valuable. Mm -hmm. That was a tough time, yeah. So, uh, okay, and, and once again, Pavi, what was the reason for you to start this second bigger round? Mm -hmm. uh, the second bigger round was that after I had worked two years, uh, there had to be like, of course, uh, uh, market has changed we had started this product business that was at the idea level in in the previous round we we started to see that uh, that the, the market is very hot and we need to refresh our strategy as well there are new technologies that are coming and we're, we're coming at that point as well uh, as well as we were growing very fast and uh, i needed to have as well a tool for for the company and, and the people share the common common vision that they have been part of and that was a one one key point that uh, by having a new round i could involve all the people that had joined yeah. after the first round okay so 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 very fast growing market and, and developing market and then you need to get the people to join the vision Mm -hmm. that, that was the reason, yeah. I'm very interested in these situations when mm -hmm. management realizes that now we have to do something out, uh, something like that. And then came the, okay, so you started to, to do the, the, uh, the, the strategy work. And in the middle of one workshop, I remember, we came to the lunch, to lunchtime, it was a whole day workshop. And then we realized what, baby? Mm -hmm. we realized that. Yeah, we realized that uh, it's impossible to do a one one pager for the company who actually is running in two totally different businesses. At that point, we had our very profitable, fast-growing services business that was in the harvesting mode, uh, just like uh, getting new people, the, the revenue was growing, and at the same time, having the heavy investment business, investing in the SaaS platform product business. Uh, that was actually a, a startup within the startup, and yeah. and me being the uh, running both businesses had a very mixed uh, feelings that uh, uh, and where to go and what to do and and how the how how actually take the both businesses uh, uh, forward, and that was the point that we realized that that the only way to take this forward is to have a two strategies, two one. One page, yes. Yeah, two strategies with a different set of focus areas because the focus areas were not the same for both businesses. Yes, the other business, product business, definitely as well growing business, but in the investment mode, looking for international market, the services business, very much focused on the, the, the domestic business and having totally different like KPIs and, and that was the... 
that was the reason. Yeah, and I remember we were, I was so astonished that, that we, we have reserved the day to do one strategy. Mm -hmm. and, and then in the middle of the day, we decided to make two strategies. And what happened at the end of the day? We had two strategies. Do you remember that? Yes, I remember that very it well. Right there for and, and, and that was a very, very important point when we realized that, because then we realized that we have to start uh, building this product business as a totally different uh, business entity, even with the own CEO, uh, not only with the strategy, but we needed to decide that we have to spin that business off from the services business. Yeah. And that actually then accelerated our exit plans for the service business when we had finally understood this point. Okay, quite nice. And, and tell me, how did we involve the people? Mm. Then uh, involvement, uh, uh, first we have this workshop uh, with, with you where we had prepared like uh, uh, with the management team some, some very important areas. But, but then uh, what I think is the most e important in the strategy is actually the, the people involvement and uh, their ability and possibility to influence in the strategy. So then what we did with you is that we, we invited all the people, I think we had the three rounds where they actually could first uh, with uh, dig digital uh, platform respond some questions and we had a all the process was digital that was very very good because at that uh, with that method we could see that uh, even though those people who are not always loud and give their uh, views and uh, yeah. opinions loud could could participate because they could write their opinions via this platform that you you offered to us yeah and, uh, then in between of these rounds we had a management team meetings where we elaborated the ideas and the comments that we got from the employees and took the next version back to them uh, with again like in digital format and uh, and then i think it was a third round when when then we finalized the strategy that then we presented to the board we yeah, and we had one physical meet meeting also, I remember. Mm, yeah. I remember, was it the first or the third one? Or we had one physical meeting. Where yeah, we yeah, we had a, uh, one, but that, it, at that meeting we as well had the possibility to use the, this digital platform. Yeah, even so we it. used the Trello software, it's a digital bulletin board, and people were, were asked to give their views on different topics, and they wrote like a Facebook comments there. And yeah. And then we got the, also the quiet ones because mm. you had also very many this kind of uh, more introvert type of people mm. who, are, mm. who are product coders and designers. So, yeah, and I think that is one of the key takeaways for for us for managers to remember that that get these people heard as well. Those who are not always loudly expressing their opinions because they can have a really like a silver bullet point. Uh, yeah, with they big ideas but they are yeah and with this this way of working this uh, di digitally facilitated workshop so you can get everybody to speak at once mm -hmm. at the same time and then you can sort out so that was the point now and then you uh, uh, yeah that was really fantastic thank you for sharing this story i think it's valuable because the whole fight but i think very many persons are in the same situation that mm -hmm. Are taking the same travel that you have that there are different opinions among the founder owners and, mm -hmm. and, and then you see that you have two businesses not one mm -hmm. and one one uh, additional comment that i would like to point out as well that uh, too often uh, people and the managers think that the small companies don't need the strategy so so structured strategy that that uh, that the big companies need but that's equally important even maybe more important that the big com small companies have have the strategy one page because the small companies like our was like 45 people we have much less resources to work with so that's even import more important to really crystallize what is the goal that we are going thank to you for sharing that point this is really wonderful and now i would like to challenge you in one one question baby so mm -hmm. i mean uh, I think that many uh, small company leaders 
think mm. that that we are so agile and we we are so going flow and we are doing all the time this that they they are afraid maybe afraid of a strategy they think it's a linear strategy yeah. but how do you feel about this is was it a linear strategy or no not even in our case it was not linear but uh, what what we could get with the st- strategy was that we had a the vision we we dream dream big and uh, then how to get this this vision or whatever purpose you then nowadays call it so it, it, that that what are the steps that we, we need to take uh, towards that vision or, or mission what we are what we are working with and i i we could change that uh, this uh, this agile or our uh, baby steps like uh, once a month if we need it but still we could secure that that we still have the the goal or the vision to be reached yeah and, yeah this is interesting so how did you build the, the implementation and the follow up mm. so what we then di- did after we had this this uh, like we call it like a, our purpose why we exist and what we need to do so yeah. then we actually started to use a, a, a planner a, a digital tool that we actually listed all the tasks that we need to do do us in in certain areas what we need to do in the accounts management or, or sales and each month we uh with the management team did the priority list if we had a 10 tasks to be done for example in the marketing or sales we always selected only one max two areas that we work within that period yeah. Was, uh, but did you do that with uh, Excel or did you do that with Ma- Microsoft Planner or what was the? Uh, we did that with, with Microsoft Planner. Okay. And, uh, and we opened that planner for everyone to see what ne- uh, things need to be done. And with that planner, we could as well assign tasks to individual persons so that they actually felt at the same time a very concrete way of being part of the strategy execution. Okay. Nice, nice. Mm. So, uh, but um, uh, tell me still, Pivit, uh, what would you say would be the number one benefit of uh, having a, a written strategy on one page? Mm. Number one benefit is definitely that it's it's visible, it's simple, and it's very structured way of, of approaching quite complex area because not always uh, people think that the strategy is actually our everyday work and with this simple one page you can really make it like yeah yeah Riz. but but hey the whole process it couldn't have been just a, a dance on roses as i say you had you have to have some kind of challenges also in the in in this process so but what what were the difficult things uh, the difficult things were that it was very often like uh, uh, because we all have, have too too many things to do and uh, it had been very easy to make a shortcut so that cut the corners uh, and but i think that the the way that that you forced us to make it in the proper way without like uh, taking the time and and building the structure because the d- most difficult one would be that that just go straight to the execution part yeah and with structure in this case uh, uh, what do you mean by structure in this case now uh, by structure I, I i mean first that how the way how we build the strategy and involved people that was a very structured way yeah. and then after we had uh, define that the structure way of following that how we execute the strategy and uh, the, the concrete things that that people could see that, that that it's not only a piece of paper it's really like tasks there are people behind the tasks there are deadlines there are like uh, responsible persons and so forth that yeah. i mean okay. yeah so uh, during the next year after you had this second big round so mm-hmm. during the next year so how much did did the strategy somehow evolve there and, and did you make new corrections along the way for, for the direct for the for the direction or, or how did that happen or was it the same no uh, the priorities might change so that uh, after we had uh, made this this um, strategy and we had uh, identified the areas where we need to work on uh, more so 
in each management team, we went through that what are the priorities for the next quarter. And the next that, quarter, okay. And that could change that in some quarter we saw that we have to focus more on the marketing and sales. In the other, uh, other maybe meeting, we needed to say that, okay, now we have to focus more on our internal quality issues or whatever they were. So yeah, yeah. that way. But we did not really change the, the, the big picture. You were, able, you were able to keep the big picture, but you needed to do priorities there, mm -hmm. and you did quarter-wise. Did you look at the strategy monthly at all, or was it so that you looked on it quarter-wise? No, no, we looked at uh, every, every month. It, yeah. We had a like, management meeting twice a month, and one of these meetings was only focused on the strategy. And the okay, okay, thank you for sharing that. That was important, mm -hmm. important mm -hmm. to uh, understand. So, uh, and by the then, after you did this second big, big round, and, and of course you had the exit in mind, the shareholders wanted to exit, but then I understood that the exit came one year after. Mm. And it, it was a yeah. little, little bit faster than you thought. Yeah, we had uh, originally our exit plan and exit strategy was like two years later what, what it actually happens. Uh, and uh, it, it, it was earlier than, than originally planned, uh, but nevertheless, uh, we did the strategy, uh, uh, keeping in mind that, uh, okay, things that just, just happened. Yeah, so, yeah, you can plan those things, the offer comes and then it comes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but definitely the positive thing uh, with this was that we could, when the, the companies uh, approach us, uh, we could share our vision and our strategy and see that this company is is probably organized with with the strategy point of view as well. Yeah, this I would like to still discuss a little bit more. So, of course, you showed the, the uh, buyer that mm -hmm. that that uh, you have a strategy. Now, what what do you remember? How how much impact did that do for the for the real exit? How important was it? Mm -hmm. The feedback that I received already then and after that as well that the the company uh, and actually they were really surprised how much we had worked with the strategy. And it was not only strategy, it was as well the, the planning and the follow-up and uh, yeah. the whole, whole like, uh, process and uh, structure we had. Because so often I get feedback that the companies have strategy, but that it's, it's a <laughs> piece of paper in... Yeah, yeah, so you had implemented, it was a living strategy, really. Yeah, yeah. So what is your gut feeling that, he, did this have impact on the valuation of the company? Mm, I hope, and I, I, I don't know, I don't have a fact. So you <laughs> but, don't have a fact, but you have a gut feeling. Yeah, I have a gut feeling, and then of course I can see that uh, some of the models uh, we have started to discuss here in this new company as well that uh, that could it, they be, be used and uh, how it could be used and uh, uh, so that uh, yeah. th the small company can bring something to the big company as well. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I understood that your role in the big company now you have received a, a broader responsibility all the time. You have you have. Uh, uh, gone up in the ladder there and, and, and trying to do so. So mm -hmm. I can I can calm you up, by the that you can be calm because the worst is yet to come. <laughs> <laughs> you, are just, you are just starting your new career there. Mm -hmm. Baby, what would be finally, what would be your advice now to a company of 40 employees, mm -hmm. a growth company, they want to make an exit, they want to grow, so what is your learning about this? What can you share? Mm. My learning is that, that take the time, dream big, uh, don't uh, make shortcuts. Uh, it feels very stressful because uh, you are pressing the companies to, to make a very difficult uh, discussion sometimes, but, but uh, that it's worth it because it uh, not only helps you maybe with the exit, but it as well helps you with, the, with running the business as, as well. And uh, I, I definitely could see that that how our employees were happy and and they could see that uh, that they the commitment to the the vision and strategy was totally different when they could okay very nice to hear that so so did you also were there some kind of proudness of their work and 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 uh, did the meaningfulness of work increase did you feel that 
Yes, because I think that the, the lesson he, from here was as well that after we had uh, involved all other people, so everybody could say when they come every day to work, how I execute the strategy, what is my part in this big picture, you, you could hear it and, and, and people start discussing uh, with those terms. And I think that was uh, excellent here from, from the management point of view. Hey, Päivi, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy that you shared this story. I think this is an inspiration for very many people. Thank you so much. I still love you more, more now. <laughs> you are so great, and thank you for sharing this. This is a success, success story, really. Mm -hmm. Thank mm -hmm. you. See you later. Thank See you. Bye-bye.